Hey all, this is part six, and we're going to loop in reverse order. So up until this point, we've been starting our iteration at zero, or previously some other value besides zero, and incrementing by one or by two from, let's say, the left side of the array to the right. And that's usually how things would go. But let's give a scenario where we want to go in the reverse direction. Something that we can do, if you think about the way that we're building a for loop, all we have to do is just sort of build it in reverse. So the first step would be to, rather than starting i at zero, we're going to start at the length of the array minus one, which will by definition be the last index in the array in question. We're going to make sure that i remains greater than negative one, which means that i is going to increment downwards, or it's going to decrement, each time until it gets to zero. Once it gets to negative one, the, this condition is going to evaluate to false, which will end the loop. And then we're going to say i minus minus, which essentially does exactly what i plus plus does, except just the opposite. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see that we go in reverse order. Current index starts at 4 and goes from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, with the indexes counting down. So let's look at some restaurant preferences. And let's consider maybe we have restaurant preferences for one sibling and another sibling deciding just to be a, um, well, a misanthrope about things, or just, you know, taking the sibling prerogative. Uh, wants to have the exact opposite preferences just to make mom and dad upset. Uh, so, or just to make, you know, whoever their guardian is upset. So what we can do is we'll do the exact same thing. Start i at the restaurant preferences dot length minus one, which will, you know, start at the end. Make sure that it's greater than negative one, which will allow it to count down to zero and then stop. And then set i to be whatever i was minus one each time the loop runs. So if we run this, we'll see Texan, Japanese, Thai, Vietnamese, and then Chinese. Excellent. So let's talk about our coding challenge. We're going to complete a function that takes one parameter, an array of elements, and logs every element beginning at the back of the input array and ending at the front of the input array to the console. Your function should use a loop to log every element from the back of the array up to the front of the array, then return nothing. Below is an example of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, loop in reverse grab our stubs, grab our test cases, and start with our loop. Our loop is going to look, oh boy, oh boy, back up. Loop is going to look like this. Our indexing variable, we're going to call i, is going to be set to the length of the array, minus 1. I'm going to make sure that i remains greater than negative 1, and I'm going to say i minus minus each time. Now, if there's a chance of your creating uh, an infinite loop, it's pretty significantly higher on problems like this than previous problems because you might accidentally say i++, plus plus, or you might say less than negative 1. Actually, less than negative 1 probably wouldn't give you a less than negative 1. Well, it depends on the combination of things, but just keep in mind that you could be creating an infinite loop. An infinite loop is going to say running, then it'll probably say like the page is unresponsive or maybe it'll just freeze. But in any case, happens to lots of people all the time. Don't worry about it, just restart and you'll be okay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and run this. And we get the exact output that we're looking for. So let's take it back over to the input window, paste it, run our tests, and we're in good shape. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.